Hey everybody, this is Liz. Hope you are super fine today. Uh, today we're going to be reading Universal Secrets of Telecosmic Power by Anthony Norville. Love the guy. I want to remind you that my coaching is open. I love to coach and do energy healing. And my new book called The Light Within is coming out soon. I can't wait. It's really great. How to manage your own energy. All right, let's listen to the chapter. How to avoid life's problems and have perpetual good luck with telecosmic programming. What keeps man from enjoying life and having perfect living at all times? Why cannot we duplicate the joyous events we have had forever and be in a good luck cycle that never ends? The answer to the first question is, man's disturbing problems cloud his vision and keep him from enjoying the good life that is all around him. The answer to the second question is, we can, through telecosmic power, perpetually duplicate our joyous events of the past and by projecting them into the future with certain key telecosmograms and telecosmographs, we continue. We can continue swinging the pendulum of good luck, happy experiences, and beautiful remembrances forever in the direction of the perfect life we desire. There are basic problems that people have in common. Over the centuries, they have been mentally programmed to believe certain things about themselves. Oh, so true. They become used to thinking in terms of these limitations, and each succeeding generation takes on the burdens and perpetuates the myth that God intended man to suffer as some kind of punishment for his sins. There is only one sin. In a study of cosmic laws and spiritual phenomena, we learn that there is only one sin. This is the sin against your own higher subconscious mind. When you negate its power, diminish its glory, weaken its strength, and dim its glorious vision for your future. A woman believed in bad luck, so she had it. As an example of how negative programming works, even to create bad luck cycles, a woman once came into our work in New York City, complaining that the whole world seemed to be against her. She believed it was because she was born under an unlucky star. Some astrologer had told her she was born in the sign of Capricorn between December 21 and January 20 and was ruled by the evil planet Saturn. She wailed at, first, at her first interview with me I have been cursed ever since I was born. It must be the evil influence of Saturn. My parents died when I was five. I was put into an orphanage. Every other child was adopted by fairly well-to-do foster parents, but I remained in the orphanage for years. When I was finally adopted, it was as a maid in someone's home. Then she went on and told me of how she had been mistreated by life. She worked as a maid and never had a high school education, so could not improve her lot in life. She married when she was 19 so she could get out of working so hard. Her husband turned out to be a woman chaser and an alcoholic. She had one child and then divorced this man. Every step of the way, she told me, had been difficult and harsh, exactly what a typical Saturn person would expect from his stars. I instantly corrected this woman's thinking about the evil influences of Saturn, or having been born in the sign of Capricorn, by telling her that some of our greatest men and women have been born in Capricorn and that Saturn, instead of being a planet of evil, could be transmuted into one of good by self-discipline and refusing to give in to life's problems. I told her that some of the richest men were born in Capricorn, including Howard Hughes, Aristotle Onassis, and even President Nixon, who had overcome utter defeat at one time in his career to become president of the United States, you know, twice, whatever. <laughs> I gave this woman a complete reprogramming of her subconscious mind with the key words, I negate, I declare, I adjust, I remove, and I conquer, showing her how to use them with the appropriate telecosmograms to her subconscious mind and then ask her to report to me within one month's time. She began her new regime of using telecosmic power and at the end of the month, I wish you could have seen the amazing change in this woman. She told me that after only one week's time, things began to change for her. When her old problems began to rise, such as difficulties with her boss or arguments with her landlady or misunderstandings with her son, she would trigger the automatic subconscious mind with the keywords, I declare, and the entire telecosmogram that she had programmed within her subconscious mind would seem to flash before her eyes as a drowning man's life is said to flash before his eyes. So here's the things he said. I declare 
peace in my mind and my environment. I am not subjected, I'm not subjected to the misfortunes and problems of the outer world. I withdraw within my citadel of spirit and strength and conquer my mind, my tongue, and my temper. Then for other situations that proved troublesome, such as friction with store clerks and grocery clerks, waiters and people in her office, she would flash to her subconscious mind the keywords, I remove, and all the telecosmograms attached would bubble to the surface of her consciousness. I remove. All obstacles and obstructions are now instantly removed. I am the center of peace and calm. No outer force has power to disturb my inner tranquility. I remove friction. I remove opposition. I remove discord and anger and dwell in a core of inner stillness in which all my problems are instantly dissolved by the light of truth and justice. She often had trouble with office machinery, such as the copying machine and typewriter. I've had that with computers, especially the military. <laughs> I had to work on that. And one day she had the usual problems arise when she had a deadline and had to have copy out at a certain time. The machine stuck and normally she would have flown into a rage and stormed and ranted to everyone in the office. On this day, she told me she invoked the keywords I conquer and the telecosmograms flooded into her subconscious mind for those two words. I conquer. All persons, conditions, and objects in my environment are subject to a higher law than the material and physical. I invoke that law in this moment. I conquer my temper and tongue. I conquer time and space. I remove all obstructions and impediments and see only the perfect flow of the stream of consciousness, removing every negative force from my mind, body, and environment. Soon the machine was humming once again, and she finished her work well under the deadline. She ended her days at the office fresh and unruffled. Then this power began to work in her relationships with other people. She had never been able to get along with an aunt who was always criticizing her. She invoked the keywords, I adjust, with the telecosmograms. That which I cannot change, I shall adjust to. I am now in harmony with all people and direct love, understanding, and forgiveness to them. I adjust to change. I adjust to discord by holding thoughts of harmony within myself. She told me that her aunt stopped ranting and railing against her and actually seemed more agreeable and kindly. This woman had even changed the bad luck symbols for the sign of Capricorn into good luck ones. She told me with a radiant smile, I've even added another key word to program my subconscious mind with good luck for Saturn and Capricorn. It is, I transmute and I project the telecosmogram. I transmute. The planet, the planet Saturn into good luck and happy experiences. I gain from being born under this lucky star, for I become disciplined, cautious, and fearless. It gives me power to change my life and gives me the patience and forbearance to put up with that which I cannot change. I agree. This is Liz. So I had a shaman I trained with once, forget her name, 20 years ago. And she used to say, gosh, you don't have to believe in your, your, your signs, your astrological signs. That can be a limited gating, faded factor in your life to make you miserable. Like, well, I'm a Leo, I'm a this, I'm a that, so this and that. She actually said she played with all the 12 astrological signs as if she just adopted one a year for 12 years to great effect. And then she went back to her original sign. And though I do intuitive work and tarot reading, et cetera, I don't like to use them as faded times for your future. I think you can always change your future. So I agree. Don't let like an astrological sign limit you that you have to live life a certain way. All right, back to our regularly scheduled programming. The way to dissolve problems with and have perpetual good luck with telecosmic power. One, romantic and marriage problems. Most romantic and marriage problems may be avoided if you learn how to anticipate them and then sidestep them. Clashes will often occur in which you want to do one thing and the love partner has an opposing desire. Invoke these keywords, I cooperate with the telecosmogram. I cooperate. There are two sides to everything. I recognize each person's right to his private opinion. I shall not force my opinion nor my will on my love partner. We are united in bonds of mutual love and respect for each other. I cooperate fully to establish harmony and unity in our relationship. Very often problems arise in a marriage that are not the fault of either partner. This can be due to illness, business or financial problems or other matters, matters which cast a shadow over the marriage. Use the keywords, I dissolve, and flash the telecosmograms. I dissolve. 
all problems that now afflict my life are here and now dissolved by the light of truth. I know that the means are at hand to overcome all negative conditions of every kind in my marriage dash relationship. We are united in bonds of love and no external force can intrude itself in our lives. This problem is now dissolving and will not return again to cloud our love happiness. How a young married couple overcame marital problems. One young couple who came to me for counseling had been married only one year and were constantly having quarrels. She claimed that he was unjustly jealous. He claimed that she was overly possessive, never praised his efforts, and was under the control of a dominating mother. What else is now? How could this couple resolve their serious differences? Neither would give in or admit he or she was in the wrong. I discussed the problem thoroughly and pointed out that they both had right on their side and both were in the wrong in some ways. I then counseled them to stop blaming each other and to use telecosmic power, which had brought them together in the first place. This cosmic intelligence certainly must have believed they were soulmates and they must not let any trivial matter stand in the way of their fulfillment in love and marriage. The first key words I gave them were, I trust. They were to write this down in big block letters on a piece of paper where they could both read it whenever they shaved, made up, arose in the morning, or retired at night. Then they were to trigger the following telecosmograms with these key words. I trust. We are bound together in mutual trust, love, and respect. It is demeaning to be suspicious and jealous and shows pettiness that is not worthy of our great love. To overcome the problem of overpossessiveness, I gave them the keywords I release to be used with the following telecosmograms. I release. My mind is now released from all sense of possessiveness. Love must be freely given and freely taken, and I cannot hold that which is not mine. I now release my mate, having full trust that he will want to share every joyous experience with me fully. To conquer the tendency on his wife's part not to praise him and his efforts to succeed, which bothered this young man, I gave them the key words I praise with the following telecosmograms. I praise. I recognize the need for giving credit when it is deserved, and I now praise my mate for his efforts to make a success in his work. Of course, the key words in any romantic problem or marital difficulty, which both persons should use every day is, I love, with the telecosmograms, I love. We are united in bonds of love and our union is sanctioned by God and man. Together, we can overcome all problems. Love requires mutual respect, tolerance, and a sense of freedom. We recognize we are, first, individuals with different tastes and opinions. In the bonds of love, we share our mutual experiences, but do not demand complete subjugation of the other's personality or life. Love conquers all things, and we are permanently united in love that will endure forever. This young couple practiced these telecosmograms for a few weeks and then reported to me that most of their differences were responding to telecosmic power treatment <laughs> and that they were getting along better than ever before. Number two, financial problems, lack of money, wrong work, and restrictions on income. Do you suffer from constant lack of money? Do your bills keep mounting up while income dwindles? Are you constantly at a financial crisis in your life? Most people suffer from lack of money. Even millionaires often feel often need an extra million or two to keep them from feeling poor. I remember once at a party at my home, the noted hotel man, Conrad Hilton, was talking to someone nearby who was complaining that he was in desperate need of money as he owed at that moment $30,000. Hilton laughed and said, is that all you owe? You're lucky. I, own, I owe $80,000 at this very moment. The more you owe, the richer you are. To handle financial problems, realize that your subconscious mind knows how to materialize money for your every need. You have lived up to this moment and all your needs have been met. If you can program your higher mind to bring you a steady flow of money to fulfill, to fulfill your every wish, it will remove this problem from your mind forever. The keywords I increase should be used to start your subconscious mind working to bring you more money. Use these keywords with the following telecosmograms for money. I increase. My flow of money now obeys the impulses of my subconscious mind and begins to come to me from unexpected as well as expected sources. There is enormous wealth in the universe, and I now claim my share of money, goods, houses, 
lands, possessions of every kind, money or the equivalent of money now flow into my pockets and into my bank accounts. I am blessed with abundance and riches to meet my every need. A young woman was having severe financial problems owing to heavy hospital expenses that had drained her savings. Her mother was severely ill and there seemed no way out of their extreme financial crisis. The father had died some years before and mother and daughter were alone. This young woman came into our work and learned about how she could begin the flow of money into her life by using telecosmic power. She started programming the keywords I increase each day for two weeks with the above telecosmograms. She couldn't possibly see where this money would come from, but she had faith that somehow her mother's and her needs would be met. In exactly one month, they received a letter from an attorney in Indianapolis telling them that an uncle had died, leaving a will in which he had left $65,000 to his only relative, his brother. The brother happened to be this girl's father and her mother's husband. Her uncle had come in from Greece 40 years ago and opened a small restaurant in Indianapolis, gradually expanding until he had a bigger place. His estate was now worth close to $200,000, and he had left a bro his brother a sizable portion of it. The girl and her mother received the cash in short time, and their financial problems were solved. One woman in our lecture work in New York was always trying to win contests to get extra money. She had little luck until she began to program her subconscious mind with the keywords, I win, and the telecosmogram. I win. I shall have good luck in everything I attempt. I wish to win money from contests and on TV games. I program my higher mind with success in these competitive games, and I know that I am in a winning cycle. She kept projecting these telecosmograms, and with them each day she projected the telecosmographs that she would win large sums of money and achieve financial independence. She entered a newspaper contest giving away $10,000 as first prize in a Wheel of Fortune contest, depending on lucky birth dates. The second prize was $5,000. She cut out the rules of the contest and pasted them on a wall where she could project them with telecosmographs each day that she would win the money. She project projected how she would spend it, the gifts she would buy, the things she would do. When the winners were announced, she found that she had won the second prize. She kept up her mental programming with the keywords, I win, and on the next TV show, she won the right to compete in a game where she had the right to choose a smaller prize or a hidden one. She chose the hidden one, and it turned out to be an automobile worth $4,000. Another person who tried this system for winning money through gambling also tried his luck in Las Vegas. He put $5 down on number 26 in roulette, and just before the ball fell, something told, something told him to change it to number 28. Number 28 came up paying him $35 for each $1. He went on projecting the telecosmogram I win until he had accumulated the sum of $850. He told me that on four visits to Las Vegas, he won from $350 to $500 each time, and after that, he no longer played. He lived in Los Angeles, and the trip to Las Vegas was a short one, so he drove there several times with friends. However, let me give a warning that this system is not to be encouraged for gambling when it comes to absolute dependence on it as a source of income. It is to be used for fun or when one can afford to risk a little money without fear of being impoverished. I agree. I don't think source or spirit judges gambling or not, but I think it's always good to do something productive and useful for the world as well, but that's just Liz talking. However, the same system of invoking I win, keywords and the telecosmograms for winning Giving above, given above, can be used for making money in the stock market or for investing in real estate or other ventures. One man invoked the keywords, I win, and had a dream that a bell was ringing. So he checked with his broker and found that a stock named Packard Bell was selling for $9 a share. He bought 1,000 shares of the stock and sold it at $42 a share. He tried this system with many stocks and won on most of them. A woman had been most unfortunate in love and marriage, having married and divorced three times. When she came into my office for a consultation, the first thing she said was, I guess I was born to lose in life. Even love has passed me by. Oh boy. I gave her the magic keywords, I win, to apply to her life with suitable telecosmograms that fitted her exact needs for love and marriage. Within three weeks, this woman was engaged to marry a man who seemed to be her exact soulmate. 
Three weeks, huh? Great. Yes, these telecosmograms with I win can be applied to more than just making money. You are trying to win in the greatest game of all, life. You can invoke these higher rules of the game and win out in business, finances, friendship, love, happiness, and even peace of mind, which makes for perfect living. Three, problems dealing with human relationships in business, personal, and social life. It is true that many of our problems are due to people. <laughs> Those who daily touch our lives in business and social life often have the power to disturb us and disrupt our lives. We react emotionally to human beings and we can get some of our greatest joys as well as some of our worst headaches from other people. Our coworkers and business relationships often are vitally important for we spend many hours in their presence. Many times the way we get along with them determines our own progress and evolvement, our own happiness or misery and can even determine our state of health. A woman who worked in a large office with a group of men and women had many sharp edges in her relationships with others. She was often distracted to the verge of tears and sought out our work to find out what she could do to find an easier way of coping with her problems at the office. After talking to this woman for only five minutes, I discovered that she opposed everything that anyone said to her. If I agreed with her, that she, then she would take an opposite tack and say, no, but it isn't that way, it's this way. Then I would change my tactics and say, yes, of course it is. As, and she would be, instantly begin to veer in another direction. She suffered from extreme opposition to everything others said or did. This made it difficult for her to take orders or get along with others. Soon she had a reputation as a troublemaker in her office. When others were promoted or given advances in salary, this woman was left out of things. She had thought of making a change in her work until I showed her how she could easily program her subconscious mind to get along perfectly with others. She followed my suggestion and used three key words, which put her over the hurdle of opposition and made her one of the best liked women in her office. She won a promotion within one month from the time she began her mental programming. The key words for dealing with people in human relationships are, I agree. The telecosmograms to flash into your subconscious mind whenever you think or say the words I agree are, I flow with the tide of public opinion. I do not oppose it. I am in agreement with all that is good, honorable, and honest. I now program harmony and unity in my environment. I radiate an aura of confidence, poise, inner peace, and power. Others instantly recognize that I am agreeable, pleasant, and friendly, and they will react in like manner. Another woman was always having run-ins with her friends at social gatherings. She bristled when things did not go her way. She said sharp, cutting things that instantly turned people against her. She took pride in the fact that she was honest with people. If she didn't like a woman's dress, she told her so. If she thought a person was lying, she let him know she thought so. She foisted her political opinions on others. She had decided opinions about almost everything and she did not hesitate in expressing them. Soon people stopped inviting this woman to their homes and she was compelled to seek assistance. This was when she first came to me. I gave this woman the keywords I, I enjoy and I harmonize to use with the following telecosmogram. I enjoy. I am happy to be in the presence of people who are compatible and friendly, and I fully enjoy my friends and the social atmosphere they create. I see the good side of people, and I am in harmony with good and beauty and joy. I now gain pleasure from my associations with others, and I remove all sharp edges from my personality. I harmonize. People around me shall feel the sense of harmony and peace that I project. It is not important that I correct or criticize people. I now program my higher mind to harmony, joy, and peace, and I become harmonious with everyone in my environment. When this woman had programmed the above telecosmograms for only a few weeks, she became one of the most charming hostesses in Beverly Hills <laughs> and Bel Air Society in California and was much sought after by others. How to take power out of problems. Whenever a problem arises in your life, you can remove its sting, so to speak, by renaming it. Instead of saying you have a problem, which sets up all kinds of subconscious resistance, owing to the centuries in which man has been baffled by enormous problems, call it a challenge or a life experience. Sometimes I say you call it a project. By this method, every time you have a tendency to become annoyed, 
and angered by the numerous rebuffs that life seems to give you. Change your entire attitude and use the keywords, I adjust. Then after you have said, I adjust a few times, you will automatically trigger the following telecosmograms and program your subconscious mind with a solution to the challenge. I adjust. I now program my mind to handle all of life's challenges competently and without causing me pain, anger, or annoyance. I know there is a solution to this disturbing challenge, and I know that the means are at hand to solve it and remove it from my life. I'm confident that this challenge is now being removed and that my mind shall be able to cope with it competently and efficiently. Refuse to see the dark side of life. A man who came to me for counseling could see only the dark side of life. He was never able to enjoy the bright, happy moments that are in every person's life. He wailed, everything's getting worse. The war will never end in Vietnam. Our young people are rebelling. The streets are dangerous at night. We'll have a social revolution here in America. There will surely be an atomic war that will destroy, uh, destroy us all. This man had built such phantoms of fear and destruction in his subconscious mind that he had neglected all his good. His wife of 25 years became weary of listening to his tirade of negativity and left him. His three grown children stopped coming to visit him. His business was failing and his health had dangerously deteriorated. He was actually destroying himself by building a, a mental atmosphere of fear, hate, and destruction. It was canceling out all the natural, bright, happy, and constructive forces of his subconscious mind. I gave this man several interviews in which I helped him program a complete new subconscious mental atmosphere using telecosmic power and the keywords I change and the following telecosmograms, which would be triggered several times a day. I change. My entire mental attitude must be changed from negative to positive. I invoke telecosmic power to help me see only the bright side of life. Life is filled with joyous experiences. Good is on all sides. Life always banishes darkness. The shadows of fear, hate, and anxiety are now being banished by the bright light of my subconscious mind. I refuse to surrender my divine heritage of joy, love, peace of mind, riches, health, friendship, and good. I now put myself in the divine circuit of change, and I become one with my subconscious mind power for perfect living. It took this man two months, two months to really change his conditions of life but he gradually began to remove the shadows and fears from his subconscious mind. He told me later that it was like taking a mental bath when he did his telecosmograms nightly, making him feel once again whole and clean. He saw his wife and children frequently and they saw the amazing change in his mental attitude and they returned to him, promising to help him continue on the upward path to a perfect healing. And that's it for this chapter, folks. Very, very good. I will talk to you soon.